to, to tell our viewers. Okay. And then, and then uh, we'll have uh, a bit of chat about um, uh, some of the things you say, but also let's talk about prices. Let's talk about um, maybe um, comparison or um, the, the ability to, to be a food wine. Okay. 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 It started? Uh, Where are you? Oh, so it's starting. So, Ginny Chuli, uh, can you um, say a few words to our audience who you are and why you came here? My name is Jeannie Cho Lee. I'm a master of wine resident in Hong Kong, but actually I write and communicate about wines all over Asia. So I have a column in a Chinese financial newspaper in Hong Kong, in Korea. I also select wines for Singapore Airlines. And um, yeah, I was, I've was been a master of wine since 2008, and it's been very exciting because... The first in Asia. Well, the first Asian person. Person, yeah. Mm -hmm. And still, I'm waiting for many more to come, but uh, so far, not uh, not anymore. Just um, just me for now. But uh, I think there's such an interest, and the education for wine is so strong that probably in the next ten years there will be many more, hopefully, masters of wine and other very highly qualified uh, Asian uh, wine professionals working in the region. Excellent. And why you're here? A very kind invitation from Elie and Zekin, the family, uh, from Domaine de Castel, as I'm sure everybody here in Israel knows. They um, very kindly wanted to do a series of different tastings, including the one we had today, which was uh, showcasing uh, some of the top Israeli wines to get, uh, for me, as the first time visitor to this region, get a good impression of what, what is the the variety, the potential, the expressions that can be found here, and also doing some inter more interesting verticals of their wines, uh, going back to the early 1990s, to see does Israeli, the, the highest quality wines, can they age? Do they have the potential to age? Uh, how do they rate when you look at a wine very deeply, when you're doing a vertical? And you see how the vintage changes the personality of the wine every year, but still have the same DNA, the same uh, core. How does that actually uh, manifest itself after 10 years, 15 years? Uh, is it something that's still going to bring people pleasure? And all of those questions were exciting to me to, to discover. Uh, and also the fact that, well, you've got Tel Aviv and Jerusalem yep. <laughs> as, a, as an attraction. So uh, being my first time uh, to this part and this country, I was very excited, very excited. You've been yesterday to Jerusalem? Yes, yes. How was it? Yes. Really, I, I think I would take too long in your video to explain all of my uh, feelings and emotions about the, the city, but it was, first of all, stunningly beautiful, almost aching. Uh, and there's an, an immense spirituality, uh, a sense of something there that you don't know, you can't understand, but you can feel it when you're there. And uh, all of those things, I think. And the other more important thing for me is that I have a much better understanding of what it means to be, to be a Jew and why and the kind of responsibility and historical significance of your heritage. And in a, in a way, it's, it's a responsibility and perhaps sometimes a burden. Yep, you, yeah, I totally agree. You, you are meant to convey 3,000 years of history in a way that hasn't been understood and also throughout history been tried to be wiped out. And all of that put together really makes me understand why the, the community and the culture is so strong, why you have this uh, strong sense of belonging here as well as to each other and this sense of responsibility. Back to the wines. Yes. <laughs> um, so you had now a tasting of uh, 20 or something wines. Um, can you tell us a bit of your uh, impression, your thoughts? Uh, anyone you like particularly? I 
think it would be unfair to point out any one or two here because, uh, well, there were many. I think, I think right now from what I tasted in the 20 somewhat samples is that there is a lot of experimentation. There's a lot of exploration, which is all very good. And it's a sign of a wine industry uh, really um, maturing slowly. And the, the producers had different visions. Some wanted to express itself in a very ripe, concentrated uh, style, which of, it, of, of that particular style, and for people who like that and appreciate it um, in certain markets, definitely good quality and good balance in that expression. And then others who are trying to be um, much more restrained and elegant and, and light and delicate. And that's always very challenging in a climate like this. So I think there, there was a real variety. And that, to me, is um, an indication of the vibrancy and the, uh, the potential, really, quality of, of Israel as a country that can express very different, high quality wines from different regions using different grape varieties and not just be in one, um, one or two uh, regions or styles of expression that make people think that uh, it's, it's a very simple, in a way, um, region to understand because I don't think it is. And it would take a lot more for me to, to come up with a conclusion, but really my first um, observation is that there's potential and that it is a very vibrant, exciting community and very dedicated, passionate people. You said it all. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, we'll have to see you again here in Israel. I would love to. Pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Now let's make sure you enjoy lunch.